kiss for you. The goal of this video is to really give you an understanding of the different baselines of products. People come from different backgrounds and different demographics and, and different situations. And so what I'm really trying to do here is give an example from a bunch of different categories of what is sort of good and a baseline. Because a lot of people might think, oh, uh, I you know knew about the iPhone 10. I have the iPhone 12 now because of that new redesign. I'm just going to assume the iPhone 15 so much better. And that really isn't the case. The iPhone 15 is not so much better than your 12. It's really just built upon it. And if a lot of people, you know, don't follow very closely things like phones and laptops and, and mice and CPUs and headphones and stuff, if they're not following that, they might just assume the newer thing is usually really good because they'll see reviews and it's glowing and they'll see, you know, all this other coverage. Uh, but a lot of that doesn't really put into context the fact that your iPhone 12 is still a fantastic phone. Uh, the fact that the 15's out doesn't actually change that, right? The fact that uh, you know, the your older TV is is maybe not as up to date in some, you know, uh, full array local dimming or something doesn't mean that the old TV is bad. Same thing with headphones, same thing with laptops. Just because the thing you have currently is older doesn't mean that it's magically obsolete because of all these technologies. And so that's really what the baseline is. What was the baseline for something like the phones? It was the iPhone 10. Things are most of the iPhones are built on that basis of iPhone 10. And so if you have an iPhone 10 or later, the only thing you're really going to be concerned about in terms of upgrading is really performance and cameras if you care about that. Performance, just general you know, usability and stuff, not necessarily the smaller minute features. But a lot of people aren't gonna realize that. So this video in a roundabout way is talking mostly about that. Real quick, I have a gaming channel that I'm trying to start up, Matt Gibbs Gaming. We're gonna do four series, review series where I'm just reviewing a variety of games. Uh, my first video on that's up on the channel now. It is Multiverse's review here. People seem to like it. Pretty good uh, rating right there. Uh, just Jams, which is a series that I'm going to be looking at. And overlooked games that I think could use more recognition and just highlighting them there. Quick tips for a variety of quick tips that I find. There's a probably more shorts content. And the Game Lab, which is kind of my video examination series of kind of why games work in a variety of ways. Uh, so for example, you know, talking about different mobile games and how they work, as well as different facets of different games like Cyberpunk and Forza and that kind of thing. So hopefully those series are interesting to you. Right now, uh, there's a video on multiverses, as I said before. Every time you see this, there hopefully will be another video added. So by the time you see this, my video on Next Defiant should be up. Next time this plays, uh, whatever video I have that's you know coming up will hopefully be out. So this is kind of a reminder that when you're seeing this, New video, subscribe over there. If you like the content and game content, subscribe over here. If you like tech content that I'm doing here. And yeah, have a nice day. Today, I really want to look at kind of the concept of when is it good enough? And I want to specifically look at this in terms of tech products. Now, obviously, they can be applied to things like shoes and, you know, other various consumer items. But I really want to look at it in terms of right now, in terms of the tech products that we use every day and, and kind of that feeling that a lot of people, myself included, get when we kind of question when is something good enough, a lot of people will say it's good enough when they have the money to afford it or not afford it, right? It's usually a pricing thing. I get better, but I can't afford it, that kind of thing. I think that is definitely a very large part of it. But even beyond that, it's one of those things you have to wrap your head around. A good example, I think, is garage door openers, actually. And the reason I bring this up is because our garage door opener and the, or my family's garage door opener in the old house broke, or almost broke, basically broke. Uh, the door opener itself broke. And we're looking for garage door openers and we're, you know, checking out the different brands and stuff. And what we ended up looking for and looking at was uh, one of them had a camera of sorts, I believe, on it. So, some kind of something like LiftMaster or whatever had a camera on it and you basically could, you know, detect and, and see things in the garage. And we were like, oh, that might, you know, be useful if a lot of wooded area in New England, there's a lot of other animals and stuff that come by. And so we were like, okay, if the garage is open, it might be useful to see if there's, you know, a squirrel or a fox or a bear or something that comes in. And, and so we were thinking about, you know, getting this, but we ultimately decided against it, but it was really just a kind of content of like, we don't need to have to worry about a camera in our garage door opener breaking or anything like that. And so we just went with a sturdy and reliable option that ended up being around the same price, but that we knew was probably going to be more reliable and work better. And this is one of those items where you'll see and you'll look up, but you'll see like, okay, it has all this entire set, right? And it has a camera built in and that's the first option. And that's just, you know, trying to get you to spend more money. And then you go to Home Depot, right? And you'll have a variety of different ones. Um, 
you know, but okay, camera, not camera, not camera, camera, right? They're, they're going to inundate you with what they believe is probably the the highest technology solution because the idea of a smart home is still something that people are going to buy and something that people are going to kind of eat up and the ability to charge more money for it, right? And that kind of really got me thinking about the fact that, like, what is considered good enough? For us in our garage door opening situation, we don't need a camera. We don't need motion detector and sense and all that. And so we ultimately decided, no, we just want something that's basic, something that's reliable, and that works. And I have a couple of examples here for various items. These are, to me, I'm not going to say when these items peaked and when they got the the highest quality they can be but to me these really felt like okay if you're going to have a baseline of kind of functionality of these items these are kind of the baseline items and the first one is obviously the iphone 10 and that's because the iphone 10 and sort of what it meant for the transition from phones going from a new thing in the you know iphone 5 6 7 series to very futuristic item jewelry almost, if you could say either a fashion statement or something, the iPhone 10 really sort of signified a shift in market from, you know, a necessity to a status symbol in a way. You can have this crazy new device that looks crazy with this, you know, screen and this face ID and all that, and it's going to cost a lot of money, and it's going to have all these premium stainless steel materials and that. And it was really that shift between a phone for the practicality of a phone and a phone for the practicality of a phone. But now let's do this building up quality and of prestige, right? That that feeling. And anyone else that didn't want to do that could still buy an iPhone 8, which launched at the same time. That was more that older style. That was more function, right? Technically, this is like a, a form over function. You don't actually need this in a lot of scenarios until it got later on. But everything since then has kind of been built on these swipe gestures built on this screen to body ratio, built on kind of this design language and this gravitas. And that's the iPhone. And the reason I say the iPhone 10 is because that's really the start of when there's, okay, it's $1,000, has these premium materials, has this setup that it's going for, that's trying to be, that's very different from the lower end. And we see that now, right? We look at the latest flagships from Samsung and, and Xiaomi and Huawei and all these companies, they're going for this. And the lower end models aren't that, right? They're trying to be more usable and more standard, right? For necessity rather than for status. And so I really think in a lot of cases, people might say the iPhone 8, right? The one that came before this w was good enough because it wasn't this, you know, luxurious item. And I think once you get to that luxurious point, then you peak with something like the iPhone 10, where like that was the pinnacle of this and everything since then just has basically been an iteration. And so I would say to me, you know, in, in kind of growing up, not really having, I had a Nokia Lumina and then I went to an iPhone SE an iPhone 10R, and then my phone, I have now the S21 Ultra, and that's basically how that has gone. But I, I really think that like the iPhone here, the, the iPhone 10, really kind of set that stage of motion, and for me would basically be a, this is good enough. I don't need anything more than that. The main reason you'd want to upgrade a, a phone like this isn't because of some new feature or new camera tech. It's for performance. It's things are running slower. Things aren't performing as well. And so in a world when you have an iPhone that is inherently ahead in that category, you stop having to worry about that, right? You can get an iPhone 12 now, and it's still really powerful and ahead of the curve in a lot of situations, and that phone released in 2020, right? So there's that kind of safety net you have. And so for a lot of people, I would say the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 10 is good enough. You don't need more than that, and that's not really a thing people are looking for. For CPUs, right, for laptops, I would say they peaked around the eighth generation when Intel made uh, you know, the, the change from dual core, which is two cores, to four cores. Four cores and laptops was huge. It allowed them to actually compete to a relative standard with desktops in a lot of ways and be a functional machine you can have for a long time, right? You're not, the, the split before this was, you know, productivity-focused machines that are going to be replaced every, you know, three or four years because of just the quality of them, and then really expensive, not practical gaming machines. It, uh, the, the eighth generation really cemented this kind of, ultrabook style of very premium non-gaming devices that can last a very long time you know seven eight years that kind of thing without feeling like a, a dragging a dead horse around which is what a lot of computers felt like before that time and i know that because i bought a seventh generation intel hp um, envy laptop and that thing was huge and it was you know great battery life all that really heavy ultimately doesn't you know service and function that well nowadays 
uh, due in part to the processing speed that it has for that seventh generation stuck on a dual core. So for a lot of people, something like a Lenovo ThinkPad, which is a uh, Lenovo ThinkPad right here, right? The Lenovo ThinkPad, uh, the Yoga Book, uh, other ones from HP Pavilion, that kind of stuff. That is the, the peak. That is what you need for laptops. That is good enough for most people. But for you, it might not be, right? You might need something more than this, either because you're doing like 3D modeling or, you know, heavy uh, video editing and large files and that kind of stuff. And at that point, you're, you're going to need something a little bit stronger. But for 99% of people, what's good enough is a Lenovo ThinkPad. And, and so, you, you know, you can go through other examples like we have, okay, GPUs. For someone that's into gaming and into that, when did those peak? Well, they peaked with the, the 10 series when they had such a good value over time that people are still using them. Things peak with like the 1080, 1080Ti, which is what I had for a very long time and serviced very well. It had the compatibility. It was very ahead. It was still getting driver support. All that really kind of worked out. And so for most people, this is good enough. TVs, similar thing, right? What do you need for a TV? Ultimately, most people only need, you know, a, a 1080 TV or a big enough TV. Like if you're going for size, 43 inches, probably plenty big. 4K is probably plenty good just because at that scale, things kind of get weird if you go lower than that. And so that's kind of what TV manufacturers adopted. That standard of a 43 inch 4K TV has been around for like six or seven years, right? It's, it, it's probably longer than that. But I, I mean, 43 inch, the size itself, it is relatively new, right, compared to something like a 32 or 55 inch, but that would, I say, is good enough for most people. Uh, mice, gaming mice, if you're into that. Uh, general mice, basically anything. Uh, you know, general mice don't really have any kind of situation where they're not useful and not good. I like Logitech mice, but that's obviously just kind of a, a personal preference. I also like Razer mice. I think for gaming, the Death Adder wireless one for like 70 bucks is, is a good option. For things like headphones, earbuds, most people just use the earpods, the ones that came with your phone. If you don't, you do something like AirPods or you do something like the Samsung Galaxy Buds or whatever the, the company equivalent uh, for your phone is because they work best with your phone and they're for travel. And a lot of people think they're good enough. Why spend $300, you know, on, on specialty versions when something like the AirPods are going to work uh, as good as they can? This is obviously the Pro model, but the, the normal ones are, you know, 170 This, to a lot of people, is a lot of money. And, and rightfully so. And so you go on Amazon and you'll find, you know, $50, $40, $30 earbuds. And, and I, I got some for my sister. They're KZ, whatever. They're purple ones. And those work pretty well. And there's, you know, $30, $40. Bucks. To me, uh, when I was testing them out, you know, they sound kind of tinny and sound kind of, you know, tin can-ish. But that's obviously coming from someone that is used to wearing, you know, when I had, I had AirPods Pro, when I was using um, headphones, uh, you know, earbuds. Uh, I was also coming from, you know, the, the Sony's and my Sennheiser. So I have a very different kind of taste in these things that most people, you know, it's definitely not needed, right? And so something like the AirPods are just a quick, easy pickup there or something, you know, lower end like the KZ's really work well for a lot of people. And so that's what their threshold is. And so what I am trying to get at is that the threshold is obviously different for different people. But I think at a baseline it's really hard to understand unless you're into all this like I am where that baseline started, right? Because if you're not aware of this, you might see the latest iPhone 15 and think, oh, the, the, I knew, you know, I, I heard about the iPhone 10. I have an iPhone 12 right now just because it had the lower end models had that redesign that looked cool. So I, I got that. I just assume that my phone's trash now in comparison to something like a iPhone 15. And that's not the case. A lot of these phones are, and a lot of these tech, Technology products are just built upon the backs of original ones from before. Your iPhone 12 is not useless now that the 15 is out. It, it just isn't. It, it's The color doesn't change that. The processing doesn't change that. The quality of the cameras doesn't change that. Nothing about that's really magically going to tell you that your iPhone 12 is, is bad compared to a 15. But I think a lot of people feel that way because they'll not pay attention to this stuff for a couple years and then just assume radical changes have happened. And so this video is trying to kind of showcase that that really isn't the problem and then kind of give a base for that. Give a base for like things and products that are kind of a base baseline. So we have mouse, AirPods, headphone wise, uh, something like a Anchor Q30. These are on-ear, I believe, headphones. And so I just say, you know, those are pretty good. They're like 70 bucks, nice design, relative comfort, great battery life. So in terms of baseline, I would say something like this just because it's the general consumer facing uh, a functional brand that has, you know, good reliability and all that. 
And so something like this from a reliable brand like, uh, like Anchor, I would probably recommend in terms of just like a baseline good um, wireless headphone. Obviously laptops we talked about a little bit, you know, with the ThinkPad line and that, that sort of stuff. And so, I mean, really that that's the, the examples I have. If you can think of an example that's, you know, more maybe more relevant to what you're doing, what you're daily driving for various products, what you've seen work well and all that, uh, I'd love to have a discussion in the comments about that. For me personally, these are the choices I made. You might have different choices, so it's uh, very cool to kind of, you know, see that community aspect come together. Maybe you're from a different country or just a different background and you have uh, some input into this but yeah just comment down below and tell me you know what you're daily driving for various things and how well that's working out for you so yeah i'll see everyone in the next video